It's mid-February, and these John Eric basketball players are going down an unfamiliar path. Everybody locked in. Locked in, this late in the season, because for the first time in a very long time, there's still a lot to play for. It's crazy because, you know, like my freshman year, we came in, we was like last. And now they're not. <laughs> Patriots are getting ready to play in their first playoff game in more than a decade. To give you a better idea of just how big a deal Eric qualifying for the state playoffs is, think back to three seasons ago. They finished the year 3 and 19, number 52 in the state. That's dead last. A senior lead team, and I was like the only freshman playing of all at that time. So it was crazy. Like, we didn't have nobody in the stand. We didn't even have school support for us, so yeah, it's crazy to what we had now. Now they're 19 and 6 and getting ready to host a playoff game. It's been such an amazing turnaround for this group of players, the majority of them seniors, and all of them have their own story to tell. A story that gives you a sense of why family is so important in a kid's everyday life. When senior guard Joshua Grabre was a freshman, he had to deal with the unimaginable loss of his mom, his dad, and his grandmother. And it was at that moment that he discovered he was still surrounded by family. Just my guys being there for me. But that's made us really close to for us. For us so we just put him under our shoes, under our wing. When it first happened, he was it was like really devastated. But like he he stayed in the gym. We kept bringing him up, uplifting him. Like every time you guys said, was like you straight, Josh. You straight. We got this. Like we kept him in the gym. So like he'd get his mind off it. But you can't get your mind off something like that. So like we'll just try our best to help him out with it. If I didn't have basketball, I don't know what I'd be doing. Like, I'm not going to say I'd be in the streets. I'm not going to say, you know, I don't know. But, you know, you know, with this, I wear this with pride, you know, and like them basketball and people that have showed me nothing but love through the game, that just brought me to a safe haven. And every time Joshua takes the court, his family is right there with him. They're with me, so like, you know, everything they see me growing and developing as a young man, how I carry myself, so, you know, and basketball has helped me do that, so, you know, they'd be proud, so yeah, it'd be on my mind, but most definitely, they'd be proud. All right, Montel, I see y'all, back to one! And then there's senior forward Montel Robinson, who's had his own set of obstacles to overcome. By all accounts, Robinson's one of the best players on John Eric's team. Every time I get on the bus when we got, we got to go on the road. Like last year, we had 25 road games. My thing is, my tail on the bus, because if my tail's on the bus, I'm ready to go to war. But how his coach sees him isn't how others see him. And I think that's mostly because, because of the hearing impairment. You think people see him as being different. That's right, Montel is hearing impaired. He has 50% hearing in his left ear and is completely deaf in his right. He's worn a cochlear implant since he was one year old and has dealt with the stereotype of being seen as different all his life, but increasingly so since he's been in high school. I always say to myself, I'm still human, like everybody else, but I'm, I'm different. He said the players used to pick with him or whatever like that, former teammates, uh, but it's like jokes, like they say Joseph, but he didn't understand why. And my mama said, if they don't want to be friends with you, they don't want to be friends with you, just, just focus on yourself. And Robinson's done just that, kept his head down and stayed focused on his goals, which as it turns out, are his teammates' goals as well, to win a state championship and to eventually go off to college. Which takes us to the third part of Eric's success story, how all of this was brought together. Coach Cheese came and we just turned everything around. Coach Cheese is head coach Everett Armand. He played for Eric way back when making the playoffs was a given for the Patriots. He's been on the job for two seasons now, coming in the year after they finished the season with that 3-19 and record. We talked about it because I definitely let him know, like, um, this was like a, a big checklist for me. Uh, first, returning to the playoff, then undefeated district champs, uh, getting kids in school. That's things that haven't been done in the decades. Gee, I he a culture change. He got a thing called cycle breaker. That's what he did. He broke the cycle. He made it, yeah. He changed the culture around here. Yeah. Give you a sense of like hope, like we turn the whole program around and we doing things that like people saying we ain't doing decades. Decades, not since 2012 had the Patriots made the playoffs. Even longer if you're talking about the last time they hoisted a state championship. Yeah, these Patriots have that kind of history as well. Having won the state title twice with the last one coming in 2006. I cherish that moment, man. But Coach Cheese has his band of brothers feeling that Patriot pride once again and believing that this could be their year. 
we proud to be Patriots, like, most deaf, like, ninth grade year was just a uniform, it didn't really feel like nothing, but now we grew together and now we, we brothers, like, we wear Patriots with pride. I don't worry about nothing, because I believe in my God, oh my God, I believe in all of them, I feel like we could win the whole thing. We won go state champion for our team, so this is our last, our last scene, I mean, our last year. Mm -hmm. So we want to go to state champs. We've been saying champs on me, champs on three. Champs on me, champs on three. One, two, three. Yeah. They can go definitely to final four. Yeah. Final four for sure. Yeah, because then you get there. Then it's, then it's up in the air.